A recreational player recently started to take poker more seriously. He's been playing 50 NL on GG Poker and his results haven't actually been too bad, but he's not quite happy with his play. So I offered to have a look at what he could improve. So let's go and have a look at some of the hands that he's played. So in this first hand, cutoff raises to 2.5x, hero has jack do suited in the big blind, that is normally a fold, but it's not an absolute disaster if you call. We can have a look here, jack do suited is always a fold in GTO, however, if we look at this, a fold is 0 EV, a call is almost 0 EV, but just note, if you call in such a spot, you really rely on being so much better than your opponent, because otherwise you will at the very best break even or lose a little bit, so definitely always fold jack to suited in the big blind to a cut of raise like this but anyway hero decides to call flop is not too bad we check cut off checks behind on the turn we also have a bottom pair to go with our flush draw now and we check again no reason to lead especially because we now have picked up some showdown value and this time cut off bets but he bets less than half pot which is a little bit fishy so he should probably probably go bigger if he had a really good hand or a bluff so I'm not sure what this could be but at this point we have two options we're definitely never folding but we can raise or we can call I would probably just call but hero goes for a check raise and he goes for a very large check raise so this is about six times and even more than six times the original bet so I think this is a little bit on the large side when when he calls I am pretty confident that he actually has a real hand and this informs my decision for the river. The river bricks completely with the eight of hearts. Now we can either give up or we can go really big and big means basically 2x potting it and I don't think it's absolutely terrible to go that big however the problem is that we block his auto folds we block any diamond combination not any i mean he could still have enough diamond combinations there his auto folds are reduced and in terms of value we don't block much we block pocket deuces yes but that's not a big part of his range and maybe we block some ace jack offsuit but i mean even that is just so tiny that I don't really care so I think I would just give up our hero goes for the jam and he gets snapped off by ace 10 offsuit which is very weirdly played by villain he checked on the flop okay he slow played there I understand that but then you have to go bigger on the turn but that's like typical fish play in my opinion and in the end he got lucky that villain decided to bluff it off I don't think I think Villain played it very badly, but if he had just folded preflop, he would have avoided being snapped. This next one is a blind versus blind situation. So small blind raises to 2.5x. So note, normally in GTO, you would go 3x. So small blind might not be the best player. Just keep that in mind. We call with ace check off. I think that's fine. Flop is not terrible. We have some back doors. When he now bets half pot, that's another indicator that he is probably not the biggest crusher in the world. So I think we can call peel in position. I don't mind this at all. We could even consider raising, but I think this is fine to call. Definitely wouldn't fold although I can't imagine that it is a big issue folding. Turn is pretty good for us. It gives us second pair and the nut flush draw, but he now over bets. So we just said he's a bit of a fish with the way he only made it 2.5x preflop, then half pot on the flop, and now he over bets the turn. So alarm bells start ringing. I'm not folding, but mainly the main reason why I'm not folding is because I have the ace of club the jack actually doesn't make me call necessarily although I do realize it's blind versus blind however I would probably find a fold here if I didn't have the ace or clubs against this type of player but call is fine and now on the river this is really really bizarre he goes third pot after he just over bet the turn and it 
I would have expected this sort of sizing scheme if the river had paired the board, but now I'm just not sure what to make out of it. I still think it's probably some sort of a flush, but maybe not an amazing flush because he might be panicking that after he overbet the turn and got called that maybe his whatever six, seven high flush, five high flush or so is not good enough. So therefore I would still be a bit cautious we do have the ace of clubs so if you want to bluff obviously that is the card to have in your hand and if you bluff you can go really big and basically an all-in that's what hero did however against a fish who over bet the turn even though he then only bet third pot on the river I am just not confident at all that we could get him to fold a flush. So I think this is a play that might be okay in GTO even, but it is definitely losing money against a weak recreational player. And that's exactly what happened here. He had the eight high flush. It kind of makes a bit sense how he played it, just being scared on the river. But up to then, it totally makes sense how he played it and... I'm pretty sure that this type of player would almost never fold his flush on the river. Therefore, just save yourself some money and fold the river. In this next one, there is a raise in the cutoff. We have pocket nines in the small blind. Easy three bet. Call, cutoff calls. 10, 8, 6. This is a board that I would either see bet big or check. With this specific hand, I think check is definitely the way to go that's what hero does happy to see that and now villain goes with a half pot bet it's again a little bit fishy normally you would expect him to go smaller in such a situation because we still have aces kings queens jacks tens eights sixes possibly even in our range so we still very much have a lot of big hands therefore he should go smaller but he goes big so i'd be a bit wary however never folding and probably not raising either i don't really see why so calling is fine the king of diamonds doesn't really change much except that we do have a lot of kings in our preflop range and maybe we do check call ace king or king queen however actually probably not that much so i'm not sure i agree with what hero did in this case he donk bet on this turn i'm not sure if, if this is great i think he was either panicking or he just realized the king or he thought the king might be good for his reign however i don't really know what this would accomplish but now we get called and on this king river we now checked so we do open the situation up for villain to bluff he goes half pot i don't like that we have the nine of clubs that blocks some of his bluffs although i don't think it matters much it doesn't seem that he has a big hand and the thing is if he has a hand like jack 10 queen 10 ace 10 pocket jacks he might just check behind at this point and not bet that. And that is the reason why I think this half pot bet doesn't really represent much because if he had a king or a full house, then he would go bigger than half pot. And therefore I would definitely call because this line just looks pretty fishy to me. Hero did call and he did win against the ace five of diamonds. So well done. However, I still think the donk on the turn was not necessary. And this next hand, I think Hero made his first real big mistake. So first he raises up, ace-queen suited in the cutoff. He only makes it 2x. In the cutoff, I would always go 2.2 or 2.3, even 2.5. We now get 3-bet by the button and he makes it massive 4.6 times our raise i would still call but just keep that in mind that he made it so big 
Now, 9-6-3, all we have is two over cards and a backdoor flush draw. We obviously check. And now he pots it. He more than pots it, which is not a thing in GTO. He should not go bigger than three quarters max in this situation. I looked it up in the solver. So if he goes with the three quarters bet, then ace queen of clubs is a call it is about one big winning one big blind if you call or you can even raise small and a fold would be zero and you basically never fold in this situation however I don't think that I would continue against real life opponents especially because if you tweak it to make it so that he pots it then I'm sure this goes to zero if not below zero so I would definitely not continue in this spot but we now pick up even more equity on the turn or I should say we pick up some equity on the turn we check and he now jams he over bet jams and hero called this one off and I do not agree at all with this you lose even to ace king that plays it like that in the s what what kind of bluffs does he have? Maybe some, some totally random stuff like King Jack. Maybe he does have clubs, but it's very unlikely. And you're not getting the pot odds to call at all. You need to be good like over 60% of the time. And yes, you do have, like if he has a hand like tens or jacks or even kings, then you also have some over card outs, but you basically only have nine clean outs. So your equity at the best is somewhere around 25% or so, and you need 60%. So absolutely a fold hero called and he bricked. Villain had queen nine suited. Now I would never have expected to see that. However, yeah that emphasizes that he really is a fish villain that is not hero but hero still paid him off villain actually overplayed his hand and hero also called off way too lightly in this spot and now it's time for hero to overplay his hand another blind versus blind situation small blind raises to 3x we call with ace 9 off happy with that flop is ace 10 4 small blind checks I think that's fine. We can bet, but checking is absolutely fine with top pair. We don't need that much protection and it's all good. Now the five on the turn, villain over bets it. So definitely calling, absolutely not folding with the ace. However, just keep in mind that villain over bet this spot. So he polarizes himself to something like a slow played ace king ace 10 ace 4 or maybe now he's got ace 5 or slow played fours tens aces or now fives so is he saying that he has something like that or a bluff of some sort okay we call fine and now the river is basically a brick, but it improves our hand to two pair. And now he doesn't overbet again. However, he goes with a three quarters bet. So after he said on the turn that he had something really big, he now says he still has something big, but maybe not as big anymore. So what do we do with that information? He still says that he has something really big or nothing. This is not really an unpolarized bet. He didn't do this with say ace eight or ace deuce or something like that. So he still has a really big hand. And if he has a really big hand, do we want to raise in this spot? No, all his bluffs will fold and his big hands are ahead of ours. I still think that we are good quite often because he can bluff, but if he has what he says that he has, then we're almost never good, except maybe, maybe against Ace King. But I would not raise and I would definitely not jam, which is what Hero did. And he got snap 
called by pocket fives. So you might look at this hand and think, well, it's blind versus blind. It's a real cooler to have two pair against a set. And yes, in some ways it is a bit of a cooler, but the way it was played, it actually is not a cooler. Hero could just have called the turn and then just called the river rather than jamming the river. And if you want to raise, then raise smaller. And if you then get raised again, then ace nine is a fold. That would still even be better than jamming because the only hand that you get called by that you beat, well, not the only one, maybe ace four and ace five, true. There are some like ace king, ace four, ace five, but you lose to ace 10, you chop against ace nine and you lose to aces, fours, tens and fives. And I just think that that's not good enough to jam. Just a quick one. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, it would be amazing if you could do that. Thank you. This now is an interesting slow play. Hero has ace queen suited, raises it up, button three bets, we call, and the flop comes pretty good for us to over cards, backdoor straight draw, and the flush draw. We check, he now bets pretty big as he should. We could raise and get it in, but I don't think it's worth it. I think calling is absolutely fine against this big polarizing bet. So we call. The turn is excellent for us. It gives us the nuts, but unfortunately he now checks. And the river is really, really interesting. So I still am not sure what the best course of action is, but... What Hero did was to check. I don't mind the check at all. Normally I would say just go for value yourself. However, if villain has a big hand like aces, kings or ace, king, he will probably bet that hand now after we just check called the flop, checked the turn, and then checked again the river when we could go for value. So I think if he has a hand, he will bet it. Also, he might have some bluffs, although I don't think that he will bet bluffs. The only thing is that if he has a hand like ace queen himself, which is obviously not diamonds, or if he has some other ace, even if it's ace five or ace 10 or so, that he might just check back and he would call a bet. So therefore, I think there are two ways to go for it. You either bet yourself and you can bet fairly big, or you check and let him bet his bigger hands and then check raise him. And this is what Hero did. And it worked out very well because villain bets and he bets pretty big, about two thirds, and we can now jam. Villain calls us with a set of kings. So this one I would call a cooler, but it was well played by Hero, I think. And uh, against this specific hand, he got the maximum. So I was curious and I looked up the solver. And actually with ace queen of diamonds on this river, you check about 10% of the time. And 80% of the time you bet pretty big, so almost pot. So yeah, those are the two options. And against villain specific hand, as I said, this was the right play. Otherwise, you can just go big yourself. This last hand is also a very interesting one. It's a multi-way pot, button raises, small blind flat calls, which is quite unusual in GTO terms, but recreational players do it all the time. So I think he, this guy is probably recreational. I would always call behind 9-7 suited in this pot, especially because I would want to play pots with a small blind. We flop great. We have a gut shot and a flush draw. It checks to us, we check. And now villain who opens raised goes pretty big so normally in gto terms he should go fairly small in multi-way pot if he goes pretty big i think he probably has a hand small blind folds and we go for the raise as i said because i think that the button might have a big hand because he bets so big that's that would make me reevaluate it and maybe just call but i think there's no mistake in raising it up we get called the turn is great we now now we have uh, our flush, we even have a gut shot to the straight flush, but the board is also paired. However, I think that we have the best hand the vast majority of the time because I don't 
think that he really ever has a boat, although not ever. It's possible that he has quads or a boat, but it's very unlikely. And him having a much better flush is also unlikely. So I think I would definitely go for a bet. I would not go big because we want to get called by, say, jacks, queens, kings, aces, especially the ones with uh, heart in them. So definitely gonna go for about third pot, but hero decides to check and villain checks behind. And now the river is like pretty bad, but actually it's not as bad as it looks. And the reason is because how many tens and how many deuces does villain really have? It's not impossible at all that he has ace 10, king 10, queen 10, jack 10, 10, 9, something like that. That would make total sense. It's very unlikely that he has a deuce. So I would completely discount deuces. And yeah, six sixes is also still possible, of course. But I don't think that out of his entire range, that's a massive part because I still think he can have a lot of over pairs and he can have some over cards with a heart in them potentially. But I would want to maximize value against something like jacks through aces. And so I would bet not really big, but I would bet something like maybe between third pot and half pot. Hero does bet, but he bets just under 10%, which I think is a little bit small. Yes, you will get called by an overpair, but it's not great. If you now get raised, which you kind of induce a little bit by going that small, that really puts you in a tough spot. But here, he just got called by pocket queens. And I do think we could have made a lot more money if we had bet the turn with something like third pot we would most likely still have been called by pocket queens and then on the river we could have gone for another third pot or so but anyway in total i think he played it all right but i i would have just bet the turn for sure so we can definitely see some leaks in this player's game, but I don't think he is awful. He definitely has a good understanding of the game. And if he fixes some of these leaks, his result will definitely improve.